we make the misstep of not aligning with them culturally first as a candidate, as a church. On this series of the Seats to Streets podcast, we tackle something that every church has to deal with. That's hiring ministry staff and filling open positions. And this series is called Hiring Ministry Staff Made Easy. We want to look at a few things. We want to look at our the current way we're doing it. Maybe it's a little broken. Uh, we also want to look at uh, a cultural fit of the church and then something new, maybe you've never heard of, uh, that we call a yellow flag interview, that we'd like to give you those tools. So glad that you're here with us to be able to experience what this series is about. But first, before we go, I want to tell you about our sponsor for the Seats to Streets podcast. That's Pioneer Bible Translators. With prayer as their strategy, PBT wants to see transformed lives through God's word in every language, including deaf, our deaf brothers and sisters. Be sure to go over to pioneerbible.org and check them out. But for now, enjoy this series. Hey, welcome back to the Seats the Streets podcast. My name is J.R. Horn. That guy over there is still Brian Gorman. And uh, we're rocking and rolling in a series that we've kind of titled Church Hiring Made Easy, uh, or Hiring Made Easy for for churches. Because one of the things that we've encountered uh, at Seats to Streets, um, working with churches, walking with churches, uh, is is an absolute fear over how, how, how do I hire my my next staff member and Brian, I don't know about you, but right now there are no candidates, zero candidates oh, man. out there on the market. There's so much pressure on churches. Like not only how do I hire and onboard my next staff member, where do I go look for them with all the, with all the, with all the, uh, uh, with all of, especially our uh, Christian universities that have, that have shut down over the last five to six years. Um, that's been the primary spot for churches and ministers to go look for resumes, but those are going away. So, Brian, we're going to jump into it and go, all right, here's our experience. Here's our model of what we guide churches through. And we, we really think that the actually uh, hiring like, like church staff, it can be made easy and made much easier than yeah. what we've done in the past. Easier but, and substantially more effective. Uh, most of the hiring yeah. practices, a lot of the times we struggle because we didn't, you know, the, we didn't hire well. <laughs> like you'll yep. avoid future struggles if you if you go through the process of hiring well, and because of the low candidate scenario, right? It's very similar, like up where I'm at, the housing market is in this bracket. There aren't that many houses on the market. And so because of it, people will take anything, oftentimes over asking price right now, because there's supply and demand. And so because the supply is low, the demand is high. Um, I I do wanna, with that in mind, I wanna speak to ministers for just a quick second here. Uh, I wanna give you a personal challenge as a minister, and that is, Ask yourself in the last five or six years, have you duplicated yourself to create more ministers? Mm. Because part of the reason why we're struggling to get ministers to take this on as a profession is because they haven't been inspired to see it as a viable career option by the ministers they've known. And so like, that's just a personal goal that I've set over over the course of my um, ministry is, uh, you know, and I, this is a silly thing. I keep track of like, what is my average rate over? I've been in ministry now for 25 years. And my average is one person in either full-time ministry, a full-time mission work or full-time as a uh, not-for-profit leader um, every three years. And so mm. that's kind of been like a demographic that I've pushed toward and tried to build out. But I think that's really important for us to build up the next quality people, build them up within your church so they yeah, see it yeah. as a, a sense of excitement. I mean, think about it, Brian. I mean, what I, I I would venture to say. I mean, I I you and I've you and I've been you know connected for a long time, and I know a bit of a bit of your backstory as to far as how you came into ministry and whatnot. And I would venture to say it's very similar to mine that at one point in time there was a minister, or you call him a pastor, whatever you want. There was a minister that you connected with really well, and at some point they went, "You should consider going into the ministry." I. I'm shocked at how little that happens today. Not not that I put yeah. blame on someone, but it 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 doesn't. It, it 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 does not happen at the rate and the frequency that we experienced it growing up. So yeah, yeah. I like that challenge. Well done. Way, so but I think that's important. Here's so here's what we need to do. I, here's what I want to I want to kind of throw out in the middle of the table, kind of drop a bomb on the middle of the table because I I believe there is a absolutely 
uh, crucial misstep that takes place in most uh, church hiring scenarios. When, whenever someone is hiring church staff, we're, we're not just talking ministerial, we're talking your church staff. That's all the way from the lead minister down to whoever's on the bottom of your lead, your, your org chart in the tree that it goes down. There is one grave misstep that takes place. Um, and, and, and I believe we have to put more focus on it. And that really is, uh, we tend to focus on interviewing and asking questions on the wrong topic at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. We, we want to get in and get these and get our three things that I've got to know out. Ah, and, but it's the wrong topic at the wrong time. And one of the things that we teach churches, Brian, is we want to talk about the right things the right way. And oftentimes mm-hmm. that is the right topic at the right time. And I, I really believe that there's two topics we need to flip. We, we try to come in and think about theology quickly. Do they align with, the, align with us theolo- uh, theologically? But we, we make the misstep of not aligning with them culturally first as a candidate, as a church. So I'm yeah. going to say we put culture before theology in our hiring process. We are not saying that theology is not essential. I mean, especially Correct. with the with the reduced number of people in ministry, um, and with the uh, more blurred lines between denominations anymore, that you end up with a little bit more of just a homogenous church world. Like ministers can almost move from denomination to denomination differently than they ever have been able to before. So, because of that, the theology of your church, like you need to have that mapped out. This is absolutely yes. important to be able to work through. I'm not taking that away from it at all. But if you find, right, you've got the theological component, you've got the effectiveness, like can they do the job? But if they can do the job and they're theologically aligned, but they don't fit your culture, Mm -hmm. it will will potentially do more damage to your church long term than even messing up the theology. Because theology, you can course correct. Right. You know, effectiveness you can build around, but someone who's just a bad fit for you culturally is a bad fit. And the reality is what in our experience, most churches struggle to know how to find that and struggle to make that. I don't, again, I'm not saying that it's not another priority. They struggle to make it priority one. Right. If that's not in line, don't bother with the rest of it. Yep. And that's what we're saying. We're not saying theology doesn't matter. We're saying if this is out of line, if culture is right. out of alignment, the rest of it is, is it really won't matter. So, so when I'm, when we walk into churches, we oftentimes, we will show them the template of what we believe is the ideal roadmap uh, for hiring your church staff. Um, and, and when I, when we sum it up, we look at them and say, with each interview, we want to answer a specific question question with 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 a theology interview we want to answer the specific question do our theological stances align like the candidate and the church do they align when it comes to uh the uh, the job specific or or the the role specific interview uh, can they do the job do i believe they can do the job when we leave the meeting i should be able to look at you i'm, I'm talking to a lead minister to say uh do you believe they can fulfill the role of the student minister here at, you know, insert church name. Yes or no. It should, it should be as simple as that. And and really the cultural interview that the, the one of the questions you can ask is, you know, do, do I want to work with them? If, yeah. if I pull into the parking lot and I see their car, am I excited to go in? Or do I need about five minutes to breathe to prepare myself for going in? Do I, That's the beauty of starting with culture first. Have mm-hmm. to. So Brian, yeah. what, what are, what are some of the techniques? Um, uh, and now, now, now both of us here at Cease the Streets, you know, we, we have, we have one direction that we're going to take churches, but we love to put our flair and nuances in because of just the, the gifting that God's given us. So, uh, so some of the things that Brian does is, is brilliant. Um, and, and I may, I may choose to use snippets of it, but I, I've got some, uh, some side stuff too, to give churches, but Brian, I want, I want, I want them to hear what, what you do. How do you go about, uh, uh, walking so a candidate through or conducting a, a culture interview or what are you looking for in that culture interview? Well, my, so for me, my cultural interview takes uh, place in two different settings. One is just a quick phone call. And then if they make it past that, uh, 
then after we do a, an, you know, an effectiveness, can they accomplish it? Then we do another deeper dive into the culture. So that deeper dive is a longer interview. But the first one, the very, very first thing is a, is a 20 to 30 minute phone call if they make it that far. And for me, it's one simple question. There's some other ones that we'll deal with as we get into the, um, as we get into it a little bit further. But the very first question I ask someone is, tell me about yourself. That it's just a simple question. Tell me about yourself. You know, hey, my name's Brian. I'm from such and such church. I'm the lead minister here. Uh, tell me about yourself. And why I'm asking that is they are going to reveal in that some of their priorities. They're going to reveal some of their personality. They're going to reveal um, the type of person they are. So in that, if if they give me the, you know, well, well, I was born back in, you know, and they kind of work through all of that, okay, then I learn a little bit about culturally, they're going to be about this, you know, minutia details, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. If I find that um, they begin to immediately start telling me good, fun stories about uh, the kind of things they like and, and where they've been and where they went to school and, and they build that out, right? Very conversational. Oh, okay. That guy's more of a people magnet type person. And I'm right. going to pick up those nuances real quick. At the end of the day, I'm only asking one question. Did I like talking to you for 20 or 30 minutes? And I, I remember one particular time we were looking to hire someone uh, for more of a pastoral role here in the church. So I was sitting at my at the church office. I made the phone call when I got in the car. It takes me um, eight minutes to get from the church to my house. And I talked to this guy for what felt like 40 minutes and I had not made it halfway <laughs> home. And I was like, dude, like I was working to see if I could extend the conversation. I wanted yeah. to give him a shot. And I was yeah. four minutes in and I was ready to be done. And, and I gave him a few more chances, but after that point, and it was just a simple question, tell me about yourself. And he was so quick to be able to clarify that. I went, I don't want to talk to him anymore. And if I don't want to talk to him on the phone anymore, I definitely don't want him sitting in the office next to me. No. Simple. No. Because, and, and here's the thing, right? Whether you're part of a, a leadership team that's looking to hire a lead minister, whether you're a lead senior minister looking to hire a staff, the way you care and feel about this person is, is, is going to be how your congregation feels and cares about this person. So if you're yeah. struggling with them, they're going to struggle. And if you like, man, I just want to, I want to talk to that guy even more. I, I personally, 30 minutes is the max. I don't care how good the conversation is. 30 minutes is the max. Here's one of the big reasons I do it though, is in part, it helps me know that real basic, do I like talking to them? But it also creates just enough for them to figure out, do they like talking to me? And, and it yeah. begins to create a sense of excitement in their, in, in their own world to go, I want to work there or I don't either way. If they're like, dude, that guy is not going to work for me. Right? <laughs> right. Cool. I don't want to keep going through an interview with a person like that and start diving into a no. bunch of questions if I didn't like it. So for me, it's about a, it's 20 to 30 minute phone call. The one simple question in that one is tell me about yourself. Okay. What about so you? What do you when I, Well, I, so I don't, whatever, whenever I'm interviewing candidates with churches that's an option that that seats the streets can do with you so that's always an option that i we, we that we throw out on the table and, and most churches that i've worked with they they take me up on that option of of um leading this cultural interview so for me i don't have time for a 30 minute phone call and another step that goes into that 30 minute that goes into that culture satisfying that culture interview um when it when it comes to the template of of what we coach churches through on the ideal interview schedule, it would be culture interview first. It's usually about a, for me, it's a 30 to 40 minute. Next is the role specific interview. Next is the theology interview. And then any sort of on site interviews or ancillary in interviews with elders or ministry teams or whatever. But if we can stay within that four, we're, we're, we're pretty good. So culture's up front. So for me, when I'm doing this on behalf of the church, I, I start out with just that 30 to 40 minutes. That's it. And when I'm talking to the candidates, I'm already in the mindset to know that they are in the process of meeting with church after church after church. They're already in the process of getting drilled with question after question after question. So I've assumed that if I ask them, hey, tell me your strengths, it, they're going to 
ideally the candidate is going to have a, a an answer that they've given over and over and over and over again. Yeah. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad they've researched. I'm glad they've thought and did the you know the mental mapping of themselves and to to script that out. But I I want to see them answer in a different way. I don't want the same answer they're giving to every church. So I'm going to ask them different questions. I'm going to ask them a different question, but I really want to hear the strengths. So here's two questions I want to give you. If you want to know the candidate's strengths and you want to know the candidate's weaknesses, here's a different way to ask them that you're going to get a truer, raw answer off the cuff because it's going to completely sound different than what you're asking for. So here's here's the question you would ask uh, if you want to try to find their strengths. What would a panel of your peers say is the greatest thing you bring to the table? Oftentimes I'll, I'll tell I'll tell a candidate that, Hey, I'm just, we've just walked into the auditorium. I've asked you to bring in all your mentors, your, your peers, your trusted, uh, the, uh, the trusted individuals that, that, that you have in your life. And we're sitting there in front of them. And I, I, I look at them and say, Hey, what is the greatest thing that Brian brings to the table? And I'll look at the candidate and say, how do you think that, that, that group in the room would answer? It's the same thing as what are your strengths? What are you good at? What's the greatest thing you bring to the table? And oftentimes you'll hear them, you'll hear the candidate go, oh, um, that's a good question. I, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I didn't really prepare for something like that, but that's, really, hang on. I, I, and they'll go through a mental process of walking out what they're good at, right? So same thing. Let's go back to look at the weaknesses, right? Same type of question. What would a panel of your peers say is the one area of your life that you will have to constantly monitor? What's the one area in your life that you're going to have to constantly keep a finger on the pulse to make sure that it's in the healthy zone, right? What's the weaknesses? Oh, yeah, I just, and majority of the candidates that I've talked to, Brian, have said, I just, I just take on too much. I've just, uh, I've got to watch my work-life balance or I tend to you know, put my, my wife and family second. I do a lot of night work. Uh, I, I just, I just say yes too much that, you know, TL, DR, whatever. Um, that's, and one, that's, that's a massive weakness that we need to consider. But when you ask them what their weaknesses are, they're probably not going to come with that. They're probably going to say, well, you know, uh, I probably should uh, be a bit better organized in my office and, you know, keep my desk a little tidier or, or, uh, you know, make sure I, you know, tell the senior minister my, the exact plans or give them the plans before I publicize them. I don't really want to, I don't really want to know all that because the senior minister, you guys can work on that to, to, to help them progress. But what's the one thing in your life you're going to have to monitor putting, putting your, you know, putting ministry over your wife and family. I want to know that. Like, that's what I want to know. Not that it's a red flag. Nope. You're out, but it's a, Hey, we're going to have to help you out and mentor you through this. Um, so let me give you some variations on that, that the yeah. same idea. And I, I really believe if you really want the truth from someone, ask them the same question about three different times in three completely different ways. Right. Yep. So another way to ask those same questions, right? So we're just trying to help you when you build out your list. One of them is going to be, and, and a variation of it is if you could uh, take one thing off of the job description that you never have to do in this church ever. What's one thing you will you should you don't ever want to have to do in this church ever? You can take it off and, and immediately throw it away, right? For me, accounting and bookkeeping, throw it away. I don't, I don't want anything to do with the finance, right? Cool. What what what's the one thing, right? We have all of the components of this church. What's the one thing you would just throw away from the job description? Another variation of the strengths question would be. If you could write your ideal job description, what would be the very first thing on the list? And here's the kicker to this one, by the way. <clears throat> As the question asker, you want to take away one of their cards. So if you're going to ask a preacher, what's the very first thing on your list? Every preacher I've ever met says, oh, my greatest gift is my preaching. Now, I think we've heard enough preachers to know that's probably not true. But they believe it, it is. So take it off the table. Right? If you're, if you're looking to hire a, a preacher, senior minister, lead minister, if you could write your job description, what's the very first thing on the job description? And it cannot be preaching. Worship minister. It cannot be leading the singing. Kids person. It cannot be teaching the children. It cannot be teaching the teens. 
right? Take that off the table and you're going to start to see a little bit more about their wiring, which will tell you if you've got someone and you really are looking for a pastoral type person, because mm-hmm. that's going to really fit your culture, you're going to learn real quick whether they are or whether they aren't, right? Um, you're going to be able to gain that insight. So those are just some different ways to ask those same questions. And you want to ask them two or three different ways to get that sort of clarity. One of my personal favorites, um, and it's going to sound like, you know, an efficiency question, but it's not. It it is, give me your current job description, what you do right now, sum it up for me in one sentence or less. Dude, if, if you're in a church of... 200 and less, and I've got to describe to you what's my entire job in one sentence? Like, well, it depends on the day. Sometimes I'm the custodian. Sometimes I'm the social media manager. What do you mean one sentence? It it makes them think higher level, but what you're really listening for, what you're getting out of it is, this is how they view themselves. Yeah, yeah. Right, oh, I'm the face of the church. Okay, that's how you view yourself. I'm the primary organizer of our activity. Okay, that's how you view your, and you're getting a little insight into culturally what they're gonna be bringing to the party. And so I think that's a really, really big one is asking, it's the same questions Jared's asking. It's just doing different variations on it. And each time you do it, you get another angle on that same person. I think that's really important. So here's one question that I like to ask. Seems weird, seems odd, but remember culture. We're talking about culture. We're not trying to, we're not trying to find their theological stance. We're not trying to find out if if they're able to grow a youth ministry from thirty to sixty. We're not we're not there yet. I, I want to talk about. I want to see how they're made. I want the tells on um, if they're if they're people focused, if they're power focused. You know, are 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 they are, are they that pastoral type of person? So, here's a question I ask. Tell me the three books, uh, your, the the three previous books that you just read. Mm-hmm. You know, and you can't say the Bible. There's the quantifier, right? Tell me the three <laughs> previous books that you just read, and you can't say the Bible. It, it, it is, it, it is, it is, it is insane when you see, when you hear, or watch the videos because we'll record these and send them. We'll record the interviews and send them to the churches. When you watch them struggle to answer this question. Yeah. Here's what I'm looking for. Here's what I'm listening for, though. I'm listening for the type of book. I'm listening for are they pigeonholed in one subject? I'm listening for um, is it are they creative books because they're trying to because they're maybe a creative person? Are, are they reading books in order? Like, well, I just finished this trilogy of books. Well, is hmm. is that because it's a really good story, or it's because you're the you know you're the list maker uh, and and you have to get it done in order? I'm, I'm mm-hmm. listening for those. Brian, I, I listen, I listened to one and, um, I, I, I can, you know, that, that moment where you're like, Oh, I've been talking for 40 minutes and it's been four minutes. Yeah. It's it. That was, I've, I've had multiples of those interviews in this one. I asked this candidate, just, can you tell me the three books you're currently reading? And, uh, and he, and he's like, well, uh, I just finished up a book and I could tell you the two books before that. Like, yeah, that's awesome. Oh my, they were the, and this wasn't like for, for writing a paper. This was for pleasure, giant, you know, theological treatise on specific topics. And I went, yeah. wait a minute, we're, we're hiring for a deeply people person pastoral role. And you're rolling through, I mean, it was a something, something the size of the book that you were reading about Alexander Hamilton. Like, bam, yeah. that one. And then the next one. And then the next one. And it's like, I'm not I'm not sure student ministry is a good fit for you. Um, I'm just thinking through my last three books because I'm thinking that's funny because it's it's the uh, Ron Chernow, you know, 900-page biography of Ulysses S. Grant. It's um, Have you not a, finished that yet? Uh, I'm in the Are last. Are you still I've on got it? two chapters. The, oh. the book is bigger than the Bible. Um, I know, I know, but it, I feel like you've been on it for a year. It feels like I've been on it for a year. I've been in it for, I think I've been in it for three months because it's so massive. And and I'm reading two other books at the same time, right? Because I'm reading that one. I'm also reading a book on uh, cultural religions, uh, 
non-Christian religions and Hellenistic practices in uh, the Judeo world in the days of Jesus as to how do the Greeks uh, worship their gods in the days of Jesus. And so all of that sort of thing where you, I had to pull out my Greek again and remember Greek because it uses the actual, you know, Greek as you're reading through it. Um, so I'm reading, I read that one and Goodness. I read a book on the history of, um, uh, which alcohols were the most highly consumed alcohols and how they helped shape uh, early American history into modern day culture. So that's my last three, right. at which point, oh, this dude's crazy. We don't want to talk to him and that's fine. Here's the way I, I have another version of that same question right. is if we hire you, what would be the three books that we should read to best understand what you do? Oh. So, hmm. and I'm just telling you, as someone who, when I hire a new staff, the first thing I do is I give them, I buy it for them. It's me. I buy them usually four or five books because, Hey, you need to know this book because this is how we're structured organizationally. You need this book to understand sort of the, uh, foundational theology behind what we're doing. You need this book because this is really key for how I yep. want you to do your particular part of the programming. I want you to read this book because these are a lot of words and phrases I use and where we got them from. And I want you to read yep. this book because I think it's fun. And and I will actually, in our meetings and one-on-ones as they're prepping to come so, on board and everything else, I am helping them work through those and we're doing sort of a book report on them. So you're, so I'm, um, so traction yeah. would be one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Essential Church. No, Would not anymore. One? Used to be. Not anymore. Okay. Gospel-centered uh, church is kind of uh, – Chandler's book has been become more common there mm. to help them understand, like, everything should be about Jesus. Well, um, one that got me one that got me in trouble when I, um, when I first, you know, started working with you was the Getting Things Done book. Yep. Yeah. Not – David I, Allen. Actually, the book, the book didn't get me in trouble. You, you, you got me in trouble. I don't, did, I I ever, did, I ever, did I ever tell you this? Did I ever tell you this story? I do this time. It's, it's, it takes two, like two, two seconds. I mean, we, we flew up and accepted the job in April. We hired, or we were, we, we graduated and married in May. We are, my first Sunday with you under you was in June. Well, by the time I got the book in the wedding planning and all that, I didn't have time to read it before I, we were moving up. So I took it with me on my honeymoon. Oh, good idea, JR. That's a great, I know. that's a great, that, that one's not my fault. But yeah, no, there's fault. some great ones out there. <laughs> For me, uh, a breviary of sin, uh, not the way it should be, yeah. uh, by Cornelius Plantinga Jr. always fits into that bracket. Everyone has to read that yeah. uh, because yeah. it's a foundational understanding to me. So, it, but it, that's a question that I'm going to ask because it gives me an insight as to how they're wired, what what they think. Um, now, I'm saying that because I expect you to be a reader. I sure. expect you to be gaining insight and information, and so I, right. I think that's important. But here's a question I ask. That goes along with this cultural thing. And again, it's a little bit of a variation of something that JR mentioned earlier. But, you know, this, you know, if you had the panel of people kind of question, this is my variation of that. I want you to tell me in in three words or short phrases what you bring to this position. That three words that is really key. And if you can really get it to three words, holy cow, you're getting somebody pretty impressive. Um, but it's another one that makes them, what you're trying to do in that question is you're trying to stop them. Like kind of what Jared said earlier, you're trying to go, wait, wait, uh, you got to give me a second here. You want to pause them in their tracks a little bit because you want them to really figure out how do I concentrate what I'm saying down to this pure, these pure ideas. And from there you begin to say, Hey, is that the kind of person that is culturally going to fit? And along the way. We're always asking the question. It never stops. We're, we're asking this sort of question about this culture. Um, one more that I that I didn't mention to you earlier, Jared, but I would I would add this into it is, why are you in ministry? Some people ask that question and some people don't. I don't ask what convinced you to be in ministry. And if someone starts going that direction, I'll actually stop them. No, no, I want to know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tell me about the heart behind what you do, right? right? So, you know, I have this heart for skeptics and 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 why I'm in ministry. Maybe what got me into it, maybe why I'm in it today, right? Depends on how you want to go with it. I usually want to know why you're in it today, not what right. got you into it. What keeps right. you doing it? Um, well, I just don't want to go sell insurance. Okay, good to know. Thanks. Uh, See ya. But 
it tells me this passion that they have. It tells me the thing that that motivates them and fires them up. So that one's yeah. really key for me. Yeah. Um, but we want to finish I with this. Someone, I, what do you I, I yes. asked someone. I just I I asked someone why do you follow Jesus? Oh yeah. And in 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 less than five seconds, there was a tear that came down their eyes, and I went, Ooh. "We're going to hear the exact thing we need to hear," and it was beautiful. Yeah. 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 So, um, Brian, all yeah. of this, we need to let them know what to listen for. We need to right. let everyone know, like, as you're asking these questions, as you're going through, what are you need to be listening for? So, Brian, what what would you say a, a, a search team, a lead minister, an executive minister, whoever's leading the search, what do they need to be listening for while they're conducting this cultural interview? So there's some details in how we would recommend someone doing this. I always recommend one person leads every single interview. You don't do the popcorn interview. It's just a per one person leads it. And but what the other what you need to be looking for though, kind of look for, listen for is do other people lean in? Hmm. Because if you're saying something that makes me want to like put my pencil down and hear what you have to say, now now that that's a guy I want working with me. That guy is going to be a good cultural fit here. Right? If you are a hyper-structured, organized type cultural environment and and guy starts sharing these crazy stories and he loves telling these stories and everybody else kind of leans back and like, okay, right? Then you probably have the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking for, do people lean in, right? I'm looking for, do people ask follow-up questions? Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Tell me more about. Right, because now I've got someone who is fitting into that environment, and what I'm listening for over and over again. The third thing I'm listening for is, do I want to keep talking to you? It's yes. just that yes. simple. Do I want to keep talking to you? And if I don't, I don't want you here. Oh, it is. It is amazing what it is amazing how how much um, grief we could save. And speaking as a pastor, that we could save our churches if we just add, ask that question. But yet we, what we ask the question is, well, can they do the job? Yeah, okay, hire them. No, 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 that's next, no. that's later. Do I want them to do the job? So do I want them when I'm, the office next to me? Do I want their car in the parking lot? Yeah, when I'm, when I'm leading these by myself, what I'm listening for, what I'm looking for is to see how interactive the candidate is back with me. Because mm, yeah. the candidate knows they're coming in, they're gonna be grilled with questions. And I let them know, Hey, I'm, we're going to have plenty of time at the end to, for, to, for you to ask your questions. I don't start that time with what, 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 what questions, or I don't, I, I don't start that time with uh, what, what, do you have any, do you have any questions for me? Uh, I, when we get to the question time, I don't ask that question. What I ask is, Hey, what questions do you have for me? Cause I'm already assuming that you have questions. You so I want to see how interactive, I want to see how interactive they are. When I ask them a question. Do they give any feedback like, oh, that's a good question. Hang on, I didn't think about that. Do they ask for a moment to think? Hey, do you mind if I think on that question? Because that's really good. Uh, and then and do they come back? Do they do they ask clarifying questions? What do you mean this? When we, when we get to the end, do they ask questions at all? I've, yeah. I, Brian, I can't tell you how many times I've, I have said multiple times, hey, when we get to the end, I'm going to make sure you have at least 10 minutes of our time to be able to ask any questions you have. Because I spend my time getting to know these churches. I can answer on on a fairly good level of knowledge of these churches. Can't tell you how many times the candidates come in and went, nope, they come all good. I appreciate it. Yep, nothing. That, and I no, know not like, at all. Jr. and I are used to playing this game with people, so we understand the systems like this, and we know what to listen for. If you're not familiar with it, and you're going to try to run this yourself, I'm going to add one piece to that, and that is ask them the question at the end of the interview you know, what questions you have for us and then give them the theme. What questions do you have for us about the culture of our church, about the culture mm. of our staff? Yeah. So if you guide them that direction, here's what you're really doing is you're learning to see yeah. if they know what culture means. You're learning to see what, what cultural elements they're looking for because you're going to learn about their definition of culture based yeah. on the question asked. So I would say if yeah. you've not got, like, can, we've gone through this. We know a little more what to be listening for, but if you're not, and you want to kind of a cheat code to it, the cheat code is, Hey, in this particular interview, it's all about whether we're a good cultural fit for each other. And right. at the end, what questions do you have for us about our culture? Right. And yep. see where they go. Never assume. All, or, I mean, always assume 
but they have questions. They should. Yeah. They should They're have better. questions. So, hey, I hope that you have been enlightened. I hope that you've been inspired. I hope that you've taken notes. Maybe you've backed this recording or backed this podcast up, whether you're watching on YouTube or watching on Spotify, listening on Spotify, Apple, whatever, however you get this in your earbuds or in front of you on a screen. We hope that what you've heard has been deeply impactful. Uh, the, the, the sentence that we use here at Seats to Streets to, 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 to show what we do is well, we, we want to help you create committed growing disciple makers. That's it. We want to help you and your church create committed and growing disciple makers. We're not out for us because you're the hero. We're not the hero. We're, we, we've just got some questions and some things we'd like to put in front of you and you got it and you can run. So if this sounds intriguing to you, what I'd love to encourage you to do is go to, go, uh, to SeatsToStreets.com, visit us on there, hit the connect tab. Um, connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to. We'd love to get those uh, those email notifications that say, "Hey, I want to know more about this hiring ministry staff made easy thing you guys got." We'd love to show you uh, our 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 entire strategy and for you to be able to utilize for your church. So, seatsthestreets.com. Check it out. We would love to help you create committed growing disciple makers. So, uh, for me and Brian, glad you're here. We'll see you next week. Take care, folks. <laughs>